and um, uh, tonight uh, we are really in for a treat. And I should add that uh, Dr. Wayne Chandler will be narrating what is only the second performance of the Nubian Suite. So please enjoy. <laughs> no, nah, man, this is good. This, this is where they put me. Mr. Alex. Yeah? Mr. Alex, great. <laughs> Neil Kron, African percussion. And the first Dr. Wayne Chandler. At the dawn of our epoch, in the biblical table of nations, there looms Ham, a very prominent figure, the mother-father progenitor of the black race. Ham's progeny were Cush or Nubia, Kemet or Egypt, Put and Canaan. As we peer back through the portal of antiquity, we are drawn to one of the greatest civilizations of all time, the civilization of Egypt. We are told the story of Count Constantine de Volney, one of Egypt's most prolific authors and elite historians. Volney, imbued with all the racial prejudices which were characteristic during his time, embarked upon a sojourn to Egypt. The year was 1783. The slave trade was at its zenith. He made a discovery about the African race that would forever change his outlook. As Volney described, all the inhabitants have a bloated face, puffed up eyes, wide nose, and thick lips. I was tempted to attribute it to the climate, but when I visited the Sphinx, its appearance gave me the key to this riddle. On seeing that head, typically Negro in all its features, I remembered the remarkable passage where Herodotus, the fifth century historian, says, as for me, I judge the Colchians to be a colony of the Egyptians because like them, they are black with woolly hair. Volney continues, in other words, the ancient Egyptians were true Negroes of the same type as all native born Africans. Just think, that this race of black men today are slaves and the object of our scorn is the very race to which we owe our arts, sciences, and even the use of speech. But as profound and culturally fruitful as the great empire of Egypt or Kemet was, there was one greater and even mightier which stretched into the dawn of time where myth, legend, and history merge as one. A nation brought forth from the remnants of the great Atlantis. This great nation was Cush or Nubia. Egypt was the child and flower of the great Cushite nation. In 1962, a new discovery occurred which illuminated the origins of Africa's oldest civilization. 
an excavation headed by Keith C. Steele, director of the University of Chicago's Oriental Institute, unearthed the birthplace of Ronic-centered civilization several generations older than the first historic Egyptian dynasty. But this we knew, for it is corroborated by one of the great historians and travelers of the ancient world, Diodorus of Sicily, who wrote, and I quote, the Nubians say that the Egyptians are one of their colonies, which was brought into Egypt by Osiris. They add that from them, as from their authors and ancestors, the Egyptians get most of their laws. It is also from them that the Egyptians have learned to honor kings and gods and bury them with such pomp. Sculpture and writing were invented by they, the Nubians. The Nubians cite evidence that they are more ancient than the Egyptians, end quote. Therefore, it is to Cush or Nubia that we turn our gaze. For it is from this root that a civilization was born which would make all upon the earth a new Ashe. Now we present the healers.
Yeah. Right. That's next, right? Yeah. <laughs> the healers is a, it's really a, a dedication to those, those master people who created music. I mean, music was created by being in touch with Mother Nature because the, the insects, the birds, the wind, the thunder. Mother Nature is the original orchestra. You know, I had an opportunity to be in Gabon. And I went into the forest, and I put my tape recorder in the forest. I left it on all night. I went back the next day, and I listened to it, you know. And you hear a whole orchestra. You hear the rhythm of an insect here. You have a sound of an animal here. You hear a bird or an owl here. You hear the wind. So you really realize that Mother Nature is the original orchestra. And so that piece is about those individuals who created what we call music today which goes back thousands, thousands, thousands of years. And the music was created for a spiritual impact. In fact, the creator for the water that we drink, the food that we eat, for our children, our loved ones, our mothers, our fathers, you know. So music is very incredible. Music is, is mysterious because you can't see music and you can't touch, you can't touch music. And that's why they say music is the king of the arts because in music it's painting, poetry, music, rhythm, sound. Now, with great pleasure, this gentleman I played with in the early 1950s, and he was on a tremendous recording of Uhuru Africa. He's a master percussionist from Cuba. And those who hear us earlier today to realize how he started to play the music on tin cans. And from there, he learned from his father, his uncle. But with our music, there's always family. It's not just what we call jazz, but it's more deep than that. It's family. Most of our parents made us take music lessons or tap dancing lessons or singing lessons. So we come from a long history of culture and civilization, which came out of African civilizations. And the ancient Egyptians, they had developed schools of music way, way, way back with no such word as Europe. It didn't even exist. And they had schools of music and dance and notation. And if you go down the Nile, if you look at the great monuments of Africa, you see all the musical instruments. You see flutes, you see string instruments, you see drums. So it's very, very important. But I also have to all to say this. We have a great master in our hands. He's 92 years old on the 22nd of this month. He's a master of the conga drums. Everybody, Celia Cruz, Tony Bennett, Fizzy Gillespie, Duke Ellington, Candido Camaro. Dr. Wayne Chandler will take us on a trip on the call. Every 25,920 years, celestial trumpets sound, creating the cosmic octaves that divinely will humanity into a state of oneness. It is the grandest and most glorious expression of our harmonic convergence. We, the human race, are called to begin anew, to awaken in a dawn that's anxious to dispel the darkness so that a new day may take its first breath of ecstasy. The artificial construct of time in which we have been immersed has moved us into a reality where we invoke the illusion of what we think is real. Doubt, discord, disunity has become habit and a reflex. Brother against brother, sister against sister, both sister and brother fragmented and torn asunder as we struggle towards absolute uncertainty. 
To struggle is against nature. Flow and acceptance is freedom. Fear is the cage. All at once, we become the jail, the jailer, and the jailed. In harmonious accord, musical emissaries microcosmically transfer universal beats and rhythms via ivory key, skin and wood, and the pronouncement of metal and wind. Here, listen, transform. The days have concluded for the prophesied fall. Sit, yes, meditate, and heed the call. Ashe.
time, yes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> 92 years old. Yeah. <laughs> but I bet I have a very bad arthritis. <laughs> but when I play, when I walk to the stage, make me look like I'm 100 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but when I play these three conga drums, look out. <laughs> I feel like 20 years old. <laughs> My name is Candido Camero Guerra. Camero from my father's side. Guerra from my mother's side. I have to give them credit because without them, no Candido. <laughs> And I want to thank again Mr. Randy Weston. <laughs> and the wonderful musicians here. <laughs> and the Smithsonian Institution. Because the first time I came here, I said, I hope I can come back again because I like the audience over here in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and I was right. I'm here again tonight. <laughs> Bienvenidos, welcome, que Dios los bendiga, and God bless everyone.
Candido Camaro. Yeah. of Cuba. <laughs> Cubano B, Cubano Bob. That's what you call going to school. Yeah. Don't get the impression that the elders are behind time. They're ahead of time. Because our music is endless. Louis Armstrong was modern trumpet and traditional trumpet. Candido, oh my goodness gracious. And he'll be 92 or 92 and 22nd of this month. So while we're talking about birthdays, I uh, should be known that uh, jazz legend, master Randy Weston's birthday was just a couple of days ago. Yeah. <laughs> the ancient Egyptians stated the spiritual mystique of the universal feminine was locked within the mystery of the circle and the spiral. It is through the circle and the spiral that all things come into being, galaxies and DNA, the helical strands of hair which adorn the human head. Thus the feminine as a universal force and energy creates the axiom of becoming. It lies at the basis of all creation, and without it, nothing could be. Thus within woman is embodied the intrinsic knowing and expression of love, all-encompassing and divine. She holds a genetic signature which carries the patterns of humanity's DNA back into the midst of our very beginnings here on Earth. But she goes beyond the physical, for she is omnipresent. She connects the human race with a road of self-empowerment and personal power 
if indeed we choose to navigate her terrain. Independent, empowered, spiritually all-knowing, able to interface both hemispheres of the human brain. As a mother, she is another person from the woman without child. She carries the fruit of the night, nine months in her body. Something grows, she is a mother. Something grows into her life that never departs from it. She is both guardian and grand architect. Her love, boundless and unconditional. Thus the essence of womanity held within the core of the feminine imparts a highly magnetic spherical energy, an essential and precious substance that is needed for the creation of form on all levels of life. The spirit in man can produce the physical seed or the cerebral idea, but neither the seed nor the idea can take form without the spherical, magnetic, feminine substance provided by woman. That circular, spherical energy that when embodied by woman creates the very curves hills and valleys that men love to love. A poem. She guides man to the path of the divine and guards him from the red wolf and the snake. She sets in his mortal hand her heavenly sword while adorning him with the breastplate of the gods. She breaks the ignorant pride of human mind and leads that which is thought to the wideness of the truth. She rends man's narrow and successful life and forces his sorrowful eyes to gaze at the sun that he may die to earth and live in the abundance of his soul. Woman knows the goal. She knows the secret route for she has studied the galactic map of the invisible worlds. She is the battle's head. She is the journey star, Ashe.
African Genesis, captured in the essence of a Nubian or Ethiopian woman, we have chosen to name Arti, short for Artipithecus, a presence dating back four and one half million years, a presence giving birth to the African Eve, the global mother of the human race. 250,000 years ago, a massive exodus exploding from the African continent sought to lay the foundation of Earth's many human races and the nations which evolved from those many human families. Families reflecting new beginnings, new culture, new directions. Tracing our genesis back to an African beginning, this exodus laid the foundation of all civilization for the world as we would come to know it. All of humanity marching out of one single home. Yes, we are diverse, yet we are all sisters and brothers in the quest for unity and divine realization. A symbol of our common ancestry, the heartbeat, of not only the various cultures of the world, but the people that comprise those cultures. Breaking the mindset that we are compartmentalized and separate from each other. Separation is an illusion. Nothing nor anyone is separate from each other or anything else. Life's universal song and unyielding rhythm dramatizes the unity of an entire species. Because of Ardi, the African Eve, the species is just one human mosaic born from one divine heart, Ashe. She must have had an incredible way of walking in the forest. Huh? Yeah, definitely. Reflective and how the sisters Our oldest walk mother, in the four and a half million years old, one million years older than Lucy. Yeah, but she's our ancient mother. I spent many wonderful years in Morocco, especially with the Ganawa people. And they come from originally around the area of Mali and Segu, Bambara, that period, you know. And they were taken to Morocco when they came as, as people who brought a great deal of spirituality from the west to the north. And we spent many years with them. And um, they do some incredible things in music. They play games with music. They do acrobats with music. They do healing with music. They say that uh, every human being has a color, every human being has a note. And when you become ill, it means that you're out of tune with Mother Nature. So they play certain sounds to bring you back to Mother Nature. Because as great as men and women that we are, we're still part of Mother Nature. We can't get away. You know, we're connected, as Dr. Chandler points out in his writings. We connect to the bees and the birds. and the, We're all connected together. What well, was correspondence, as you said so beautifully, that correspondence, you know. So I heard this instrument in Tangier, Morocco. It's called a gimri. Some call it the time it's called a hajuj. It's their spiritual instrument, and they play colors. And when they play this particular color, the people dress in that color. If it's a white color or a blue color or a yellow color. And then you dance to the spirit of the music 
get you spiritually healthy again. And this is the power of a traditional music, which I've discovered all over Africa. And a lot of traditional music, the music is created in the communities to give the people spiritual healing. Because spiritual healing can give you other kinds of health, health in your body. You know, why are we on the planet? What are we here for? What's the purpose of music? Why are we here together? It's a beautiful story. We're going to feature our great bassist from Panama, Mr. Alex Blake. We're going to play for you the color blue. We call it Blue Moses.
Alex, play. <laughs> About Mr. Blake, I heard Mr. Blake for the first time when he was 16 years old, playing with Dizzy Gillespie and playing just like this. That's not what you call African Panama. You see, and when you chase African people, whether they're in Fiji Islands, whether they're in Brazil, whether they're in Cuba, Venezuela, you check out the music. You always got that African pulse, whether it's a blues, it's Latin, it's, it's amazing. And we got rhythms and colors we haven't even heard yet. The continent is so rich. We just touch the surface when we're talking about rhythm and colors. Right now, we're gonna do a piece that we put together for the great Dizzy Gillespie and, uh, and Machito. It was a commission done by Chicago. I guess it's easy to do the trio version of it, you know, than bring candy out for the cookbook. And uh, Melba Listen did the original arrangements, which was with uh, Dizzy Gillespie, Johnny Griffin, Art Blakey, and Richard Davis with Machita's Orchestra in Chicago. And it was fantastic. So we're going to just give you the trio version of African Sunrise.
Okay, I'm gonna go solo. Okay. Yeah, I'm um, after that. This is our last composition, the African cookbook. It's quite symbolic, and uh, we have Candido back with us. And Dr. Wayne Chandler will take us on that trip, the African cookbook. In the historical mist where we began our days, we walked with locks of lavender enclosed in a turquoise haze. Our journey began during the antediluvian world, the world before the flood, when all of humanity was of one blood. One great nation bound in glory, and from the book of beginnings, this is our story. A story of favor, for to earth we did tend, a time of spiritual fortitude of both gods and men. Luminous beings we were in so many ways, and it is said that giants walked the earth in those forgotten days. Through Mother Africa were born great civilizations, empires conceived in divine revelation. First was Nubia, magnanimous and grand, who gave birth to Egypt, called the Black Land. Egypt or Kemet became the light of the earth, where living life's mysteries was given its birth. So awe-inspiring was Egypt that from us it was stolen, our history cloaked, by those who took all that was golden. The battle for its soul, an ongoing challenge, subterfuge and deceit enshrouded in malice. But their efforts pathetic for our connections genetic, deeply kinetic, which means energetic. But it's all copacetic because we, yes we, descend from Isis and Osiris. Picture this, hieroglyphs written on papyrus. They built primordial mountains that kissed the sky. And when you measure the base divided twice its height, you've acquired pi. But let's not stop here while we're having fun. When you multiply the base 10 times its height, you travel from Earth to the sun. In the 1980s, the Nippon Corporation of Japan sought to duplicate the pyramids in the desert sand. Their attempt was horrific a total disaster. Degrees 360, who's the grandmaster? Oh, and one more point for all those in the room, the pyramids were never built as a tomb. Next, Sabah stepped forward out of the sand and ruled for 2,500 years without nary a man. Of the queens of prominence who ruled with might, Makeda, the Queen of Sheba was most enveloped in light. Several centuries pass and humanity's reborn with different mindsets and intentions, many forlorn. Wars and conquests have torn nations asunder. Priests and politicians embrace folly and blunder. But then out of North Africa, a lion appears who has taken an oath to remove humanity's tears. For 15 years, he left his home, traversed the Alps, and became the scourge of Rome. Hannibal Barca was his name, and humbling the Roman Empire was his claim to fame. Rome was crippled, and soon its reign would end, leaving new African empires to rise again. A model of the past bound to the present, a renaissance began to assert cultural presence. The Igbo of Nigeria gave us the four ages of time, which calculated cycles of darkness to those spiritually sublime. 
By understanding their ages and what they would create, they were able to know Earth's future and the path that man would take. After Ebo, the Yoruba would later succeed and through their spiritual traditions take the lead. Baba Lao's divine Ifa, as it led the way, contained in its binary configuration human DNA. Then Benin mastered the lost wax method, a way of sculpturing bronze. Their casting secrets are now used by NASA for the molding of their planes fuselage. From Congo to Timbuktu, Ghana, Mali, and beyond, from Mansa Musa to Songhai, we pay homage to our home. Like the walls of Great Zimbabwe, made of dense cyclopean stone. Africa seemed invulnerable, but all things change with time. Rhythm states as the pendulum swings one way, it swings the other way in kind. For in the too near distance, there's a darkness in the setting sun. The phoenix has now vanished as something wicked this way comes. Of man's many machinations, <coughs> which did get out of hand was the abomination of man selling man. Of blood and of body, souls lost and ravaged, nothing was as historically devastating as the Middle Passage. Slave ships on water, whips and chains, many would die or just go insane. Those that survived in one piece were parceled like cattle to never be released in an ongoing battle, not to find peace. Now in a foreign land, ancient spirits, tattered and torn, were given new culture and language to be transformed. Beat down, used and battered, it seemed like the end, but our indelible spirit, like the phoenix, would rise again. In the years ahead, a new light did shine, and we mastered this new environment in a matter of time. Inventions, history, medicine, and exploration, just to name a few. Then came sports, and we bid the competition adieu. But the one thing that kept us alive through it all, that created the cement of our spiritual fabric, was the sound of music and its healing magic. Powerful, awesomely transcendental, omnipotent, and grand. What we did with music, few understand. We are rhythm, and it moves through our soul. From here to Africa, long, long ago. Gary Bartz and Langston helped us remember rivers from the deltas of Mississippi to the banks of the Nile, while we sat and clapped our hands to the vibes of Lionel. Ella skit and scattered us with vocal rhythms made of gold, while Coleman elevated us in our body and our soul. Miles was an enigma, but he took us miles ahead, while Candido called down beats from the higher realms that made us lose our heads. Train allowed us to transcend with a love supreme, while Duke put back on his crown and took the throne as king. Ray put down some funky rhythms that made us move our feet while Randy Weston rode us through the rushes with Blue Moses and then gave us the Nubian suite. The musical list is endless from bebop, hip hop, jazz, and jive to classical rock and soul. But the one thing we can always say, music has always kept us on the go. What we've endured, few humans have, and yes, it's left us marred. Our mind and bodies broken, and our spirits somewhat scarred. But this is the final chapter, so take a closer look. For all that you've heard and witnessed is Africa's cookbook. It's a new chapter on the morning after, and yet we still stand firm like the rootedness of an old oak tree, who though wise has so much yet to learn. It's all about remembering how to sway and bend with the wind. 
to maintain power and composure to find our way again. Like the oak, our branches have been tattered, but we've always called on our resilience because if pressure does make diamonds, then imagine your inner brilliance. Ladies and gentlemen, the African cookbook, Randy Weston. Woo. Now the great Candido is gonna, is gonna present our great percussionist, Mr. Neil Clark. African cookbook.
It's been a very beautiful evening. It's sharing all the spirit and the beauty of music and the variations of music and that coming out of Mother Africa. The magic spiritual place on the continent, Earth, you know. And when you go to the continent, I don't care whether it's the north or the south or the east or the west, but the rhythms go like this. The Mother Nature demands a certain kind of music. Because when you listen to the insects and the birds and the plants and the wind, you get this. So a great honor, a great honor for us tonight, Mr. Candido Camaro. Our very great writer and narrator, Mr. Wayne Chandler. Dr. Wayne. <laughs> On the string bass, Mr. Alex Blake. <laughs> What a great honor to be part of Jazz Appreciation Month. And you know, Lionel Hampton is, is the key this month. I've only played with Lionel Hampton one time. That was Lagos, Nigeria, 1961. And he had eight members of his band, and I had three with me, Mr. Booker Evan, Mr. Scobie Stroman. And we played with him only one time in Lagos, Nigeria. So it's a very important spiritual evening for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joanne. Thank everybody in the staff for being so gracious, so beautiful. Randy Wesson, bless all of you. Keep the music going and bring it back to the ancestors. We need them. Our theme song from Ghana, written by the great Kofi Ghana Bar, called Love, The Mystery Of. Candido! Alex Blake, Alex Blake! Neil Clark, Neil Clark! Dr. Wayne Chandler and Robin Kelly. Bless you, baby, for coming. Fatu, bless you, beautiful. Where's Joanne? Where's Joanne?
Yeah, big time. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? <laughs> Thank you. To you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Candido! Happy birthday to you! Whoa, I mean, wait a minute, because Randy's birthday was just the other day, so we need to hit some Stevie Wonder rhythms. Like, happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Randy, Randy. Part two is uh, called you. Part two one. Two. Solid, bro. Solid. Solid. Solid.